So this is just going to be a video basically to show the main aspects of the game, what it is, what it's about, uh, what's in it, what's not in it, uh, sort of basically the really basic generic things that you want to know before you even start something because it might be something that you don't even want to play. So basically the game has a couple of different things. The way you play it is instead of uh, sort of going to a, a realm, you play standard or hardcore. Standard is you can die as many times as you want, doesn't matter. Hardcore is if you die uh, at all, no matter what. Even if it's something to do with servers crashing, anything like that, they they have a stance on it where they won't roll back any characters. So you play in, something happens with their servers, <coughs> uh, servers crash, your character dies, you don't get it back. Fairly standard thing on RPGs. And then you get the uh, what are called leagues. So at the minute there is uh, a league going on called Abyss, which is instead of just the standard game, you get this extra sort of piece of content with it, which usually comes with either an update to sort of a layout of uh, how the very end game works. Some new items might get added, and it usually comes with some sort of core change to the game that you'll experience through leveling. And then when you get to the very end game, it's usually some major thing sort of that changes the entire way that you, you play the end game compared to the last season. <coughs> so there's also uh, Solo Self Found, which they've just recently introduced. I think it was last league. And with Solo Self Found, it basically means you can't trade. You can trade across your own characters. So if you make a Solo Self Found character in, let's say, Standard, for example, <coughs> any other characters that you make in Solo Self Found Standard, you can access all those items from the chest, um, and there's no there's no restrictions between that. But you can then say, oh, okay, I need this particular item. I'm going to go and buy it from someone else. You you can't you can't do that. Uh, there is an option if you create a character for a one-time transfer. So if you create a character in this solo self found standard, and you're playing along, and you think, nah, I really don't like this. I want to be able to trade with people. It's a one-time only thing. You can take your character out of that solo self-found league, um, and I believe you can put it into the into the normal one. I'll have to double check that, but I'm, I'm fairly certain it does work that way. <coughs> so that's the that's the basic things. Um, in terms of characters, it's you can play whatever you want. There isn't any generic things. You see all the all the characters here. Uh, let's just make one uh, standard. Just because you pick a witch doesn't mean all you can do is spells and minions, things like that. If you pick a witch, you can make the exact same or roughly around the exact same build as anyone else. All characters can get access to all the skill gems, which are the way that you play, um, all the different armor types, everything like that. It may be a little bit harder if you start with a witch to play the same thing that you were going to play if you say you start with a marauder um, you think you're just for the way that the weapons the and things work in the game community? but you can say pick this guy and play the exact you same build that you were going to play with this guy uh, it's changed a little bit now just because of some things that they've added later on in the game um, just around the way that classes work at sort of higher Some levels uh, but apart from Your that the there's nothing cookie cutter this murder. guy isn't a rogue this guy isn't a warrior you know this isn't a ranger you can play anything among any characters um, anything else that's to do with sort of character creation looks and things like that um, gear doesn't really look that good if that's something that you're into you're not really gonna get uh, some sort of spangly looking character just by playing the normal game um, there are a few pieces of armor that get sort of 3D artwork and look cool <coughs> but apart from that your character will look not like this but you will get generic armor towards the end um, you can get uh, empty microtransactions which make your character look different you know you can get big big wings, capes, things like that whatever whatever picks your fancy um, but apart from that yeah, your, your characters will look fairly basic unless you go out of your way to either uh, win some free microtransactions from various things that they're doing every now and again uh, or, or buy them. You can get them fairly cheap though. Uh, so apart from that, the only other main aspect that if it was me myself looking to get into the game would be is it pay to win, uh, which it is not. The, I'll say that with an asterisk because 
um, basically in the game what you have is your chest which is where you store items just like you do in other RPGs um, and what you can buy through the store is basically more of those tabs so if you're someone who wants to collect every single item that you find every single uh, piece of cool looking gear or anything like that and you want to put it in there uh, you only have four four tabs to start with and there's a fair amount of space there's people that have won races uh, to the max level with only four four tabs um, the only other thing that you do with the tabs that you buy is it makes it very easy for you to sell things there are programs that you can download third party that let you sell your items um, but with the the tabs that you buy in game it just makes it it makes it a whole lot easier for you basically instead of having to go to a uh, open up a third party program, scroll through and list things, you can just do it within the game. Um, but it's it's not a major thing. Uh, it's something that you can live without. It's something that I, I never personally bought until I was about, I don't know, probably three, maybe four leagues into the game before I actually started started taking it a little bit serious. Um, but I think that's that's the most generic things out of the way. So we'll just we'll just pick a, a random character um, and we'll just call it. How have you paid for these skills? With innocent blood. Yours is a predatory profession. <coughs> so if you are someone who's played the game before um, and you've come back to it just to wonder how it's changed, depending when you played, what used to happen was if you bring up your map, you would have. Um, act 1, 2 and 3 you would play through Act 1 go to Act 2, play through Act 2, go to Act 3 once you got towards the end of Act 3 sorry not towards, once you did get to the end of Act 3 you would then beat whatever the final boss was at the time of that uh, sort of content update then you would go from um, normal and then you would progress to Cruel and in Cruel you would do the exact same Act 1 obviously monster difficulty scaled up Act 2 all the same, Act 3, beat the final boss, then you go to Merciless, once you started in Merciless you do the same again, all the way through Act 1, Act 2, uh, all the way towards the end of Act 3. Um, towards the end of Act 3 is when you would start doing the end game content. <coughs> Sorry about this, my throat was really bad. Okay, uh, so what's changed now is instead of doing what normal RPGs do where you get through the game start all over again on high difficulty start all over again is they now have 10 acts so you play through the game once uh, there are reused zones later on so you uh, bit of spoilers you essentially go through the game come back to it at a different part everything looks different there's different mobs things like that it's not the exact same you go through different areas things like that uh, but it's not just the same over and over again you play from beginning to maps which is the end game content you play all the way through in one playthrough you don't have to uh, change over to a new difficulty restart clear the exact same content that you've just done restart clear it all again it's it's all it's all new so what are the basics of the game then so this is your view you can unlock the camera uh, you can zoom in um, and this is as far as you can zoom out <coughs> it's fairly basic in terms of um, what what you get out of the game. Uh, it's the same as most of the RPGs. You have white items which are basic, uh, you get blue ones which are magic, yellow ones uh, which are rare, and you can get unique items as well. Um, so this is just the first thing. All we're going to do is play play to the uh, the first town just to show you what's going on. So. Is it possible to murder you kill your first monster. I currently have a thing called a loot filter on, um, which is stopping showing some items. So I'll just turn that off. So you kill your first guy. Depending on what character you've picked, you'll receive a different weapon and a different skill gem. Uh, when you kill the first guy, it will always drop the the skill gem that you're designated for that class. This isn't something that you have to keep, it's not something that you'll, you have to use or anything like that. It's just something that the game gives you as your first skill to use until you get to the first town. So, again, fairly, fairly simple. You have your life over this side, your mana over this side. Um, once you put a skill into a weapon, uh, it becomes available on your, your action bars over here. <coughs> what most people tend to do is set your left click to move only so that no matter what you do, 
if you're in a big puddle of monsters and you're trying to get out, you're never going to accidentally click your spell on someone, you're always going to be able to move. Uh, and then you're free to obviously pick whatever other keybind you want to go with your with your weapon, uh, with your skill, sorry. So we've been given Viper Strike here, which is a, a melee skill, which as you can see it says 25% of physical damage converted to chaos, uh, which basically means whenever you hit someone with physical damage, that gets converted to 25% of it gets converted to chaos damage. Uh, and it basically poisons people over time. So you hit them, you hit them once, uh, poison will go on them, their life will start to drain. So let's just walk through the, the first map of the game. Uh, so it's it's fairly similar as, as other RPGs as well. There's various sort of cluttered objects, chests, things like that that you can open, um, barrels that you can pop, things like that. Um, so there's settings that you can do, so you can have these little health bars that you've got over enemies. Uh, you can turn them on, you can turn them off, you can turn these off above you, you can customise a little bit with the UI. Um, but there's not, it's not, uh, it's not massive what you can do at the moment. Everything in terms of where, uh, sort of your mana sits, you can't pick that up and put it here, you can't put your life here, anything like that. It's, it's all set in stone where it is. Um, it hasn't changed in quite a while. Um, so I can't see them actually allowing that at any point, or if they do, I would imagine it would be a, a sort of a massive thing. Um, so what the game's going to do here is introduce you to what are called support gems. So let me just stab these guys here. So they're not shooting me. <coughs> so in this game, what you have instead of just being given a default character of like this guy being an assassin and then you get, you know, stabby stabby, uh, shooty shooty, and poison poison. You get to pick your uh, skill that you want to use. So in this case, we're using Viper Strike, and then you can add supports. Uh, and support gems are basically buffing your main skill. So at the the sort of maximum bar in this league, because there's some really weird things. The maximum sort of amount of links you can get is a chest item or a two-handed weapon and you can link them six times. That means you can have um, six gems in, in one item at a time. And linking is basically just this thing here between. Uh, so one of the main the main sort of uh, end game goals in this game is you get uh, sort of your end game item, be it a chest that you want or a two-handed weapon, something like that. Um, you'll use the, the currency in the game to get links on it uh, sorry to get sockets on it these are sockets where you put the gems um, and then you get another currency which will try to link them um, so gems only work if they're linked so if this link wasn't here and I put this gem in this would receive no benefit from it but because it's linked um, I now get supported skills of 40% chance to poison on hit and they also have one to two added chaos damage so that shows up on here as well so you can see the little green O in the corner which is basically just um, what they use as a, a, a letter to show that it's it's assigned to it there um, if you put something on and it doesn't show up it's most likely um, that the support gem you put on doesn't work with that type um, but that's something that, that you can go over later uh, in terms of gear there's not really any um, any sort of preferred way to play. You you can um, get movement speed penalties for wearing things like chest down and things like that. Um, but there are certain things that you can take to negate that. Um, it's really not that much of a, a problem to be honest. You're never really going to walk around at, at a snail's pace just because you've got sort of some heavy armor on that you that you found. <coughs> so this is the first uh, the first boss that you'll encounter on the, the beach before you get to town. He's called Hillock. It's a big big scary zombie guy. Um, so we'll just go ahead and take him out pretty quickly. So all we're doing is just basic attacking with our with our Viper Strike skill that we've been given. Which, as you can see, if you look at his health, is slowly draining over time because of the poison that we put in on him when we stab him. Um, and then all we're doing. Is using our life and mana flasks again. Fairly generic. We have one, two, three, four, and five. You can again bind these to whatever you want. Um, so this obviously 
uh, life flasks, they recover 70 life over 6 seconds, uh, and these fill up as you kill things. So if I um, if I use my mana flask here, um, to where it's got uh, one charge left, if I then kill monsters it will fill back up again. Um, so you, you don't have to sort of find mana flasks out and about, pick them up and store them and then swap them around, things like that. Their flasks are constantly there and they will refill as you kill. Um, so let's just pick up all this, all these cool fancy items, uh, and then we'll we'll walk into the first town. So towns are completely safe. You you can't die in them or anything like that. Uh, it's usually you'll do a certain amount of um, sort of zones, and then you'll get to a town area, uh, and it's basically just somewhere for you to. Uh, you don't necessarily pick up quests in this game because you can do a quest without talking to anyone. Um, so you don't have to. You don't necessarily have to go to someone and say, "Hello, I want your quest for going killing this thing." Um, if you know what you're doing, if you know where you need to go, you can play the entire game without speaking to anyone apart from collecting your rewards. So, uh, for basically killing the first zombie on the beach and coming into town, we get Still given alive, we? a reward here, which is just a variety of skill gems that we can pick from. So, like I said, anyone can pick anything. Um, if you want to decide at this point, you've walked down the beach, you like doing this stabby with the poison, um, you can just go ahead and carry on with that. Um, you get a choice here of some different skill gems. So, Freezing Pulse, uh, which is a um, cold spell. Uh, you've got Fire Trap, which throws a trap which does fire damage. Lightning Tendrils, which have just been updated, uh, which you basically channel out of your hands and big sort of like lightning uh, tentacles go blah blah blah, blah uh, and do lots of damage to everything. Uh, ethereal knives, which throws out um, sort of like little mini knives in front of you, and frost blades, which is an attack where you hit an enemy, uh, a big sort of piece of frost flies out of them, um, and then hits hits people behind it. Um, so I'll pick this one because I think this one's actually quite quite cool to show off. <coughs> um, but in terms of towns, you you don't really have to do anything. Um, there's there's very few times. Uh, where you will complete, it's usually a side quest, um, you'll complete it, you return back to town and they will give you uh, a book of skill which you use it, it's permanent and it gives you one skill point that you can put on your passive tree. Um, so I'll open it up even though it's a bit daunting if you've never seen the game before. So this is what the, the passive tree looks like. Um, don't get worried by it, it's very well it can be very generic um, most builds that are what you could consider meta I suppose tend to take the same path in so if you're playing um, uh, with this guy here and you're playing something that wants to do a lot of critical hits uh, and get lots of damage you're probably gonna come out the same way um, you're probably gonna pick up the critical nodes here you'll go up here pick up the critical nodes here you might go and get some increased area um, there's a lot of really good guides out there for builds, which is not what I'm going to go into here because I just want I want you to see if it's something that you would enjoy, um, and that's something that you could find later. Uh, but yeah, it's it's very generic. Um, once you get the hang of it, there's things like life, um, which obviously just give you life, give you more life. Um, there's certain nodes which can give you flat life, uh, like the ones over here, so that can give you 30 to your flat life. Um, but most life nodes on the tree are percent, so obviously the more percent you get, the bigger that uh, that plus 30 is going to do. Um, and that's what we'll go on to next, I suppose, with the gear. But in terms of the tree, it's not something that you have to worry about. There are a, a million guides out there for where to go, um, where you should generally be going, um, how much life you should have, things like that. Um, and with that, there are um, sort of other programs that you can use. There's a program called Path of Building, which is a third-party program. Uh, basically, it opens up the exact same skill tree that you see here, and you can just put information into it. So, if say for example you're playing this guy here, and you've picked up your Frost Blades, and you think, "Oh, right, I want to play a, a Frost Blades character," you would open up Path of Building. Um, you would put in there Frost Blades, and it would show you. Um, generically what uh, support gems are best for it and then you can also tick a little button 
and it will show you when you click on a point on the tree uh, how much sort of uh, damage that gives you and things like that. But that's again something that you'll go into if you decide that you actually want to play the game. So with killing the first the first boss so to speak we've got a bunch of white items and three blue items. Uh, the way that you see unidentified items in this game is using scrolls of wisdom which are a really generic currency found everywhere um, by the time you get sort of to, to the later acts you'll have tons of these, tons of ways of getting them uh, it's not really something you have to worry about the first couple of levels you know you might run out of them but apart from that so all you do right click on them click on something that's unidentified and it will reveal the stats <coughs> so there are thousands upon thousands of, of different combinations of items that you can get you can very easily pick up a wand that has um, complete silly stats on it, it can give you resistances, no damage, things like that you can pick up a dagger that has spell damage on it, you can pick up uh, a sword that has um, like resistances on it um, there's, there's so many combinations um, but there's again guides out there for what what it is that you that you want. Um, so with these, you get varying rolls. So usually, and I say usually, <coughs> a blue item usually has two two lines of uh, modifiers on it. While it's a blue item, so this one's got uh, plus level of socket gems, uh, ten percent increased critical strike chance. This one has just got eleven percent increased critical strike chance which means within the game's currency you can add one more line to that before um, it, it sort of gets stuck and you can't add any more. Um, this one has three because there are certain things called hybrid rolls um, which I believe is what this weapon's got unless I'm really out of the loop um, to where it's this one has three on it. Um, this is some of the game's currency, this is in standard um, so I don't really have a lot in it. Um, but basically these are your most sort of basic currency items that you'll that you'll play around with to begin with um, so aside from your scrolls that you identify with things with you'll also get portal scrolls uh, which again you tend to find that many that you never really need to bother about them and by the time you get into the game and you know what you're doing uh, you'll never really run out of them uh, but essentially these are, if you're out on your own, so I'm back here fighting some monsters and I think, oh, okay, I've got too many things, I want to take them back to town, sell some things, blah blah blah. Uh, you just hit a portal scroll, you create a little portal, you click on it, you go back to town. Um, so yeah. Your transmutes upgrade a normal item to a magic item, basically just what it says there. So you have this white vest here, uh, plate vest, sorry. You right click and you left click on it and it will give you one of umpteen random properties. Uh, the alteration completely changes everything that's on there. So if you have this 11 lightning resistance and it's the best thing ever then you don't want to get rid of it, you wouldn't want to use an orb of alteration on it because it will just completely wipe everything that's on there um, and re-roll it to, to random properties. If that was the best thing that you wanted and you wanted to add another property to it, to take it up to the two limit of a blue, you would use uh, an augmentation, which says enchant a magic item with a new random property. So you click that onto it, and you've got seven armor. Um, if you then decide, oh no, that's it, that's rubbish now, an alteration completely just re rolls. So that time you got six life, ten fire resistance. Nope, I don't want that. Five life, um, stun on block recovery. Nope, not for me. Four life, eight cold. Yep, the, that's the best thing ever, that's what I want. Um, <clears throat> it's crafting in this game is a very lengthy process. You can completely fluke your way through everything. You can make potentially the best item in the game by clicking one um, one orb on an item, uh, and you can create some of the worst things in the world. What tends to happen is you'll do a little bit of both. By the time you get to know the game, you'll make a few items. Um, Sometimes you'll find items that drop which have really good things and you might need um, a little bit more life. Um, and we'll get to this after, but you can basically, at a certain point in the game, 
get these guys called masters which um, give you access to extra sort of crafting um, but we'll go through that in a little bit so these are your white items, your blue items I don't know what I've got in standard to test with do I have any more money tabs? okay let me just jump off this guy and we'll just go into a character that actually has something in the current league that's going on. <coughs> so this is a character that I'm playing at the moment which is a, uh, a summoner character which basically means I have um, little sort of monsters that do everything for me. So we'll go into the currency tab here again. So your basic items, um, your basic ones are over here still. You have orbs of chance which is an orb that you can use on a white item. Um, and what that does is it just has a chance to roll so you can use this on a white item and you could create a magic, a rare or if that um, base of white item that you're using has a unique so if say for instance you find a pair of uh, gloves and there's four different uniques that can roll um, with that base item if you use a chance orb there's a very slim chance that it could upgrade uh, not to a magic, not to a rare, but to a, one of those uniques. Um, but there's a, a couple of really specific sort of things that you that you want to use that for. You won't just be. Uh, it's not something that you just be using sort of willy nilly on things. You you tend to use these on specific items that you want to get. Um, with some very rare things, exalted orbs are um, sort of end game crafting items. Most people. Uh, probably myself included because I don't really do much crafting tend to sell these and these these are quite profitable uh, there's a, a mirror of Calandra which is I think it's something like 1 in 10,000 hours or something you're expected to find one if that um, but basically what this allows you to do is copy an item that isn't a unique item so if someone uh, they pick up this this white item they craft it they make the best you know the highest rolls and everything like that um, someone could then use that mirror on it and, and copy it um, a regal orb is another um, sort of way to craft things. Once you get to the maximum number of uh, lines on a magic item, you can use this to upgrade to a rare item. So then it has more lines that you can put things on. Um, but again, it's these are getting a little bit much for what you would probably be using if you just start in the game. Uh, the basic things that you would probably use are alchemy orbs, which just upgrades a normal item to a rare item. These aren't particularly difficult to find, they're not very expensive. These are, I would say, low to sort of mid, mid tier. Um, and these are things that you can you can accidentally create quite good things with. Um, you can use these on a, a white item uh, and you can quite easily end up with uh, the best, like I say, the best item uh, in the game. Um, it's completely random what you roll, so there's no sort of weightedness to it. You can use this on a pair of gloves, and you get, um, you know, the highest life, the highest resistance, everything like that, and everyone wants your item. Or you can use it on it, and you can get gloves that do physical damage, a really low life roll, no resistances, um, things like that. Uh, a chaos orb is again what I would call sort of mid to high tier currency. These are a little bit more rare, um, and what they do is they are a higher version of this alteration orb. So whereas this Reforge is a magic one, um, with all its properties, this Reforge is a rare one. And again, it's completely random, there's no way into it or anything like that. You pick up your white item, you use this on it, you don't like the stats, you can use this on it, uh, and you'll just get a completely, uh, you get an item with a bunch of random new, new stats on it. Um, there's a couple of other ones which are a little bit random, um, which I probably won't go into now because it's it's probably too much for what you'll what you'll be doing if you're just looking at the game um, but yeah there's a, a few other currencies which have some some sort of cool interactions regrets let you reset passives on your tree so if I open my tree here if say for example I find out all of a sudden oh taking this was a really bad idea I can either buy those regrets if I'm playing a league that lets me trade with someone um, or obviously if I've found some I can use them so I'll just use them here just to show you so currently I have no refund points and all of a refund point is, is it lets you take a node out of your tree 
So if I use my two regrets, I now have two refund points, and I could go down here and say, oh, no, I don't want you, and I don't want you. And then I can apply those, and now I don't have those nodes, and I have two points that I can spend somewhere else if that's what I wanted to do. Uh, I'm not going to because those aren't good nodes for me. Um, apart from that, these are your other things that I was talking about where they help uh, items. So, <coughs> where is. So, this is uh, a fairly common, unique item. And what it essentially does is just gives you access to a six link. Um, so that means you can put your main damage spell in, you can link six supports to it to make it really beefy, and it just makes sort of leveling a lot easier. If this was a normal item, to get these to link, which are these little lines here, you would first use these on it, which rolls the number of sockets. So if you had an item like, um, say this one, let's just waste some currency on it. So you have this item over here, and it only has four sockets. Now, you don't want four sockets because this is the most amazing chest you've ever seen in your life. You want to use this. Um, you want to put your main spell in it, you want to put all your damage in it. So you would use these jeweler's orbs. Wow, that was a bad example. Let's grab this guy. Okay, sorry about that. So you use this, you had one, now you have three. It's completely random. You could use one of these and get six sockets. You could use a thousand and not get six sockets. It's it's just a throw of the dice. So you're using these away, using them away, and you think, okay, I, I don't want a six socket, I don't want to spend my entire life spamming these things out, I'm going to be happy for four sockets. So you've got four sockets, and you know what gems you want to go in them. You have this other one, which is a orb of fusing. So as you can see at the minute, there is no links between here, there's no little lines, which basically means if you put a gem in here, and you want to support it with this one, this one, and this one, they won't do anything, because they're not linked. So you then use this one, so now I have one link here, and one link here. So if I put a spell in here, it can be supported by this one, and if I put a spell in here, it can be supported by this one. But these can't support each other, because they're not linked. So I use another one, so now I have a three link, so that means these three can support each other, but this one can't. Let's keep going. Okay, so we have a four link. Um, getting four links, things like that, are quite easy. Uh, when you try to get things like a 5 link, 6 link, that's when it gets a little bit harder. Um, so you've got your 4 link item, and the next currency item that you can use is a chromatic orb, which changes the colours in the sockets. So, as you can see up here, <coughs> I have blue gems, green gems, red gems. Here I've got green and blue. I've got some green and blue, red and blue. If I really need to get all red on this this um, this chest I can use these orbs to re-roll so now I have all blue three red and a blue maybe that's good enough for my build maybe it isn't there are things out there that you can use online to tell you based on what item you're doing it on what the best option for you is in terms of using your colors on it but that's again another thing that's a little bit further down the line um, in terms of the way the game works in terms of your armor types on the tree the way that you path is these travel nodes which are really generic um, sort of buffs I would say so from wherever you start there's usually two um, that split into sort of four paths that you can go so if you're starting as a witch you can go damage and then once you get here you can go spell damage so even more damage or you can go cast speed to make you cast faster there's um, usually paths to get out of it if you don't want to take any of these, if you're doing some sort of weird builds, or if you only need um, to get one way. Um, so you can go out of here and only spend four points instead of spending all these points going through here. But what you tend to do is travel out of one path that's good for your build, pick up these, uh, these big nodes, um, and then you use these travel nodes to get to other areas of the tree. So, being a witch, I am in an area that has a lot of intellect, so I'm never really going to struggle 
if my item like this one here says it requires level 52 uh, we're looking just at the top 76 dexterity and 76 intellect I'm never really going to struggle to get intellect requirements because the way my tree is, my character is I'm going to pick up enough intellect to never have to worry about it dexterity however isn't the the biggest thing that I pick up in my build <coughs> the way the tree works is dexterity is mostly over over this side strength starts to come in over this side intellect is up over this side so sort of the, the top half intellect lower sort of left side is strength and then right side is is intellect uh, sorry dexterity um, but what you can do on the tree is depending on where you path there are these big notables that give extra points so obviously you get 10 points for your, your tiny notables uh, and then there are these big ones which I think I'm actually picking one up yep there are these big ones which give you a boost of the other so if you're playing a witch and you really want to wear this chest plate but you can't because you don't have 76 dexterity if you're really struggling the only thing you can do uh, you can't find any items that have it on you can pick these extra things up on the tree uh, and they're scattered around so there's one there uh, there's one over there there's sort of one in every every area that you are so if you start as a melee build and you're really struggling for intellect you can you can grab one quite easily um, but that's the way it works with gear so if I go to some some of the things that I've got here that are red so this one here dexterity is 119 and it's red that means I don't have the required amount of dexterity to use it so if I open my character I have 92 dexterity <coughs> again this bow requires 185 dexterity but there are certain things like a melee weapon which you would think I don't have enough for which I can quite happily wield things like that um, so in terms of, of whereabouts you progress on the tree it's quite generic what um, I keep saying generic quite a lot. It's uh, it's sort of laid out for you what gear you will pick. If you're playing around uh, intellect areas, it's going to be very easy for you to wear these high intellect gear uh, compared to if you want to wear something that requires a lot of strength. And obviously, if you're playing strength, it's going to be quite difficult for you to get enough intellect um, unless you obviously invest into it to wear the uh, intellect items. Um, that is pretty much it there's not much else to go over in terms of how the game works it's extremely fun it's what I think um, at least that Diablo 2 should have grown into uh, and I'm fairly certain that's what the um, what the creators of the game thought um, so what I'll do I will just run uh, a map just to show basics of the game so <coughs> once you beat once you beat the game you do your act one you go through the, the whole of act one your act two three four five then this is part two you do your act six through to act ten uh, and once you've done act ten and you beat the final boss you then get access to this this very end zone um, where you will meet this nice lady who is uh, sort of now the beginning of the end game she'll give you a choice of maps and maps are the end game content once you finish with the story uh, aside from a very few sort of specific things uh, you'll very rarely need to go back to any of the story just because the way the game works um, a couple of niche things where you might need to go back to certain places but it's you will never finish the game and then say all oh, right okay I beat all 10 game all 10 acts I now want to go and farm here it's it's just not the way it works you finish the game and then maps are what you come on to next so just to show you how many maps there are this is what your atlas looks like this is all constantly changing every new update that they do they tend to swap um, either how the atlas works, where the maps are, um, what level they are, or tier as they're called, um, and then generally there'll be some new boss or um, some new thing going on basically with the with the map. So in this league that we're playing now, 
um, we have a fight between the Shaper and the Guardian, Shaper and the Elder, sorry. Um, so we have all these funky looking designs that affect maps, um, and the way that you play the game changed a little bit compared to last league. Um, and maps work exactly the same as items. You can use all this all this currency on it. Um, so if I use this on my map, it will go blue. If I use this on my map, it will go to yellow. Um, I can use this to completely re-roll it into something else. Um, you know, it's it's exactly the same way that you use items. Um, the place that I'm in at the moment is a hideout, which is something that you can do very early on. Uh, it's to do with masters again, but that's that's another video. Um, and it's just an easier place for you to run your maps on. So all you do is you get a map device, um, you put your map into it, and then you enter through the portal. <coughs> okay, all I'm going to do is get my minions out, which my build is. Now, there's a thousand and one ways to play. Um, the build that I'm doing at the moment, <coughs> sorry about my throat again, is uh, a build where I have minions, they run around and kill everything for me, and I do various things. I have a big spell here, which casts out all these little lightning balls, um, it puts a curse on my enemies, um, and then I also have these things down here, which are offerings, so I use this here, that gives uh, my minions and myself, due to something else, um, buffs and things like that. So, if I just walk around, and I cast a spell, my big balls go out, they put a curse on everything, and then my minions go to work, and they start firing at everyone, beating on everyone, killing everything inside. <coughs> now then, this is a, a fairly safe build. It's not really something that I can um, that I can die to things easy on. This is all um, just depending on the way that you that you do your build. Uh, and I'll show you another one in a second, just to show you different ways of, of playing. Um, so yeah, the the basic end game works. You open up your map, you come into it. Um, you can do a thing called slash remaining, and that will show you how many monsters left on your map. And the whole idea is you run around this map, you kill all the enemies in it. Once you've killed all the enemies in it, you don't have to kill all the enemies in it. You just run around, kill whatever you feel comfortable with. Um, once you feel like you're done. So, I killed this pack. I'm happy with it. I'm going off for the night or something. All I do is I can either log out or I just open a portal. If I've picked up too many things, um, so I have picked up all these here, all these amazing items that I want, um, and I get to this point where my inventory is full, I can open a portal, go back to my hideout, and I have the rest of these portals. So the way the game works is you get six portals per map that you open. Um, if you go into a map, yeah, you can always teleport out of it, bar some very sort of odd situations. There might be um, uh, things where you go like into your map, that you might go to a master's map, things like that, but that's again something for another time. Um, so you can come out, again, this is a hideout, this is something that everyone can get, this isn't anything that you have to pay for, anything like that, um, and this is just one Need of the map. people that you can get in your hideout. So I can sell her all these things that I've got, you can just control click your things in. So I sell her all these things that uh, I don't want, I've decided that they're rubbish and I don't want them, or if they're blue items or yellow items that you've picked up that are rubbish, uh, you get better returns for them. So I sell all those, and then I think, okay, I'm going to go back into my map. So that's that's generically how how the game works. Um, I'm just going to put my filter on here just to show you what it looks like if you um, if you don't want things showing up as much. So you could see how many things were showing up on the floor before. Whereas if I have these up now, all I get are um, sort of rare items with good bases. So if there's a, a really good sword base that everyone wants to use um, that maybe has something different than last week. It might have something like, um, you know, uh, it might do extra damage, things like that. Uh, if it's a really good base, it will show up. Uh, and you can you can edit these yourself, but there's there's uh, some quite some quite good ones out there that, that people already do for you. Um, so 
these are what you would usually see but with my item filter on they don't show up at all and it basically just makes it easier for you you know what you want if I don't ever want to see these items I can hide them so when I'm running around my map all I'm seeing are the things that, that I want to pick up um, so that is basically how the game works once you get to sort of level 68-ish or so you'll probably be around Act 10 uh, you go and kill the final bad guy um, and then that's it then you'll be you'll be doing maps for the rest of your sort of character's level uh, the max level you can get up to is a hundred I wouldn't I wouldn't say that's anything not necessarily achievable but something that you'd want to go for um, most streamers that are playing it that do it uh, it tends to take about sort of a week of really constant playing sort of putting not necessarily 24 hours a day in but a lot of time um, so yeah, you tend to get to sort of level 68, 70-ish, that's when your build really sort of comes together, you start using the things that you, that you really want to, uh, and then you move on to maps. Um, then mostly what you'll be doing, you'll be going into your maps, you'll be coming out, you'll be selling your really bad things that you don't want to your vendor, and you'll be doing things like this for items that, that you want to sell. These are your tabs that you can buy. Um, so this is where the, the microtransactions come into the game. <coughs> there's nothing that you can buy in here that innately gives you more damage um, any more options the things that other people don't have it's purely cosmetic and then um, the stash tabs you can live with the the standard four tabs that you get but this just makes um, this just makes selling things a whole lot easier so with your standard tabs in the game there is no right click option on them so if I'm right clicking on these, nothing happens. This is a premium tab that you can buy. If I right click on this now, I can not only just give it a name and change its colour, but I can take this little button here which changes it to a public tab. So I found these really cool items that I want to sell. I go to my tab, I turn it on to public, and I can price each an, uh, item individually. I can set a negotiable price on all items, I'll set an exact price. So if I want to put everything that I put in this tab is all going to be sold for one one chaos orb. So I put in one. And I pressed the wrong button. Managed to press escape somehow. Let's just use it here. So public uh, exact price. Uh, let's just do two chaos orbs. So as soon as I tick this anything that I put in here will instantly become available on um, basically Path of Exile's website anything that you put in here is searchable so there's a couple of there's a website that you can go to uh, which is a third party one called poe.trade and Path of Exile have now started doing their own uh, on their own website where you can search for items so I put my item in here I don't have to do anything instantly now if someone decides they want to buy the item it takes around sort of 30 seconds or so for it to show up someone can be searching for this exact thing um, obviously in this case they won't because it's a white item um, but someone might be searching for the exact item that you've put up you found this sword, it's got damage on it, it's got uh, increased damage um, it might have uh, things like bleed on it, something like that and someone might want the exact sword you slam that in there, they're searching for that on the website, it pops up they will then send you a message um, which says hi I've seen your item on this website I want to buy it for uh, your price that you put which is two chaos um, and then you trade people that way you invite them to your party you go to either a location usually your hideout their hideout uh, an act zone if you don't have one uh, you right click their name trade you put your item in they put their uh, whatever they're paying for it and you accept and that's that's the way it works <coughs> that is the only thing that you can get from the microtransactions which really adds a big a big upgrade to the game apart from that all this other stuff is just cosmetics um, it just changes the way your character looks uh, you can get little pets you can change the way your skills look um, you can get things like fire on your weapon um, but again doesn't affect the game in any way whatsoever someone who's put a hundred thousand pounds into the game isn't going to suddenly do more damage than someone who's, who's never paid anything into the game um, so yeah, that's that's pretty much it. Uh, I'll go ahead and just show you one other 
character um, which just died just to show you a completely different playstyle and again this isn't usually the way that you would play this is just slowing everything down just for the sake of, of showing things off um, but this is a uh, what you call a melee character Glad you made it back. even though it, it's it's not going to look like a, a melee Stay character once we get into it so you put your map in and this is frost blades which we picked up on the other character at the start and it's also using um, another spell called blade flurry which is more of a sort of single target but this is another way that you can that you can play a character um, so this one is basically I attack and I get these, these little frost bolts that go everywhere and this is this is a, a melee skill so the way the game's been going quite a lot lately is they've made it a lot more um, a lot more friendly let's say uh, of how you how you sort of get into the game and kill things it used to be that if you was playing a melee character you would pick up um, sort of a very small, um, uh, sorry, a gem very early on that would do let you do a little bit of splash damage around you whenever you attacked, and that was it. Whereas now it's a lot more fluid. If you're playing a melee character, you're probably going to go in as fast as a bow character, a uh, spell character, and everything like that. Um, but that is the basics of the game. This video is probably going on a long time. But if it is something you want to pick up, it is completely free. Um, there is tons of guides. There's builds on the forums that walk you through from level one telling you what nodes to pick on your tree, things like that. Um, but yeah, it's it's a, a really good game. Um, and it's something that I think if you've seen it on Steam recently, it's won some awards, I think. If it's something that you've seen on there and you're thinking about it, I would go ahead and just uh, get it downloaded, give it a try. Uh, usually, once you get to maps, uh, I believe the developer has said, once you get to maps, they have your soul. And that's pretty much the way it's, it's worked with me. As soon as I got to the end game, it's the only game that I've played. Uh, but yeah, I stream it occasionally on Twitch. Um, I've got my YouTube, which I'm probably going to start doing some videos for now. Uh, so if it is something you're interested in, come back. There might be some more. If not, check out uh, people like um, Google, uh, sorry, YouTube for Zizzerin, Ziggy D, uh, Mathel, Cute Dog, uh, Rise QT, people like that. You start YouTubing that, you'll you'll get linked to all of the people, Tarky Cat, things like that. Um, and they, they go into more in depth, they're very knowledgeable on the game in terms of uh, scaling things, damage, builds, all things like that. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to give you a basic overview of what the game is, what it plays like, a little bit about the currency, see if it's something you're interested in. Alright, thanks for watching.